Hey guys, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. King James says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Man, what a noble, amazing phrasing from the word of God. Uh, you know, we're, we're anticipating Easter and the acknowledgement and the celebration of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He identified with us in our sin so we can identify with him in his right standing with God. He left the splendor of heaven and laid aside his deity rights and took the form of a, of a human being to relate to, identify with, empathy, compassion, kindness, rescue. He comes in to deliver. He doesn't come in to judge or to condemn, but to save. Pay careful attention to that. God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world. It was already condemned. He came to deal with that condemnation. And Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So prior to that, prior to that repentance and prior to that new birth, we are under condemnation and we're on a fast track to hell. And that's why Jesus came in that moment in the proper time, he died for the ungodly. He didn't, he didn't die for an elite few. He didn't die for the, those that were righteous. He died. He desires no one to perish, but all to come to eternal life. This is compelling. And I mean, it's essential that we repent, change our minds, change our way of thinking, surrender to him and, and open our hearts to him. And con through confession, with a mouth, confession is made, and the result is salvation. With the heart, man believes, and the result is righteousness. So we need to put away a stony heart and put away an, an unbelieving heart. Trust God to help us. No one comes to him unless he draws us. But in, and in case there is that drawing on your life right now, or since there has been that, we just keep following through as believers. We just, in our human condition, we... We struggle, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces, which we, by the way, have victory over. And we need to be renewed in the spirit of our minds. And here it says, um, it says, if, if then you were partakers of Christ's resurrection, uh, and, you know, were you not raised to life with Christ? The answer is Yes. You know, I, I was reading in Romans, the sixth chapter, and I, this is probably one of my favorite verses because uh, it, it, it's just so concise regarding the work Jesus does. It says in chapter six, verse one, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may increase? Because earlier in chapter five, it says where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. So, Paul is saying, now, don't look for a loophole to sin or a, 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 a there's no, <laughs> he says, may it, far from it, may it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Uh, you know, it's, it's no longer to be habit. Life is habit forming. Since we've died to sin, we've got to develop new habits, the habit of walking with God. And he says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Look at verse 4. This is the verse. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead, just as Christ was raised from the dead. Happy Easter. He was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. It's glorious. The Father did it. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we too might walk in newness of life. Man. The old things have passed away, all things have become new. That's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, this person is a new creation. The old things passed away, behold, new things have come. Man, I want to encourage you today. This is not make-believe. This actually happened. 2,000 years ago, 
The Bible says at the proper time, Christ died for the ungodly. So getting back to what Paul told the, the Colossians, since then you've been raised with Christ. Don't stop there. Keep seeking the things above. I mean, the pull to the natural things of this world are electromagnetically strong. That's why we've got to submit to the Lord and trust him and his resurrection power to lift us up. You know, pull us up out of the miry clay, out of our own imaginations, out of our own vain pursuits, and really endeavor to live for God, you know. Um, everything else is, everything else is uh, perishable. And I had a friend who said, he printed up a bunch of stickers that said perishable, you know, in, in the in the produce section, they're perishables, you know, and in the, the, the meat counter, they're perishables. You got to take them home and refrigerate them, right? Uh, but, well, canned goods, they have a shelf life. Well, it's perishable too. Every, in fact, everything is perishable. Everything is going to be consumed with a fervent heat. So this guy puts stickers on his motorcycle. He puts stickers on the refrigerator. He puts stickers on his TV, everything he had. And um, just to remind him, this is, this is uh, it doesn't last. Uh, but, but we set our affections on the things that do last and where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And we're, and I'll close with this, to set our affection on things above. The Weymouth translation said, give your minds to the things that are above. William says, practice occupying your minds with the heavenly things. Um, Knox, you must be heavenly minded. New English Bible, let your thoughts dwell on that higher realm. And the J.B. Phillips says, give your heart to the heavenly things. Father, I pray you help us to do that. God, there's so many temptations, so many, so many, so much of the allure. Help us, God, help us deliver us from temptation. Help us to hit the mark in Jesus' name. Amen.